Alright guys, video 2. Uh, this one is uh, pretty more uh, heavy. We're going to talk about the auto tracker, calculating the lens distortion, uh, the deviation window, enhanced tracking, and uh, again setting a distance constraint. Uh, this shot is a harbor shot of a huge ship with containers on top of it. Uh, Ramco and Rob shot it with a helicopter. Now we are going to um, normally export the buffer compression file, but because I already have one, we're going to import one. This will make sure it uh, plays back smoothly. going to do the auto tracking uh, out of my head I think it's F3 is the shortcut or F4 into the camera tab of the attribute editor in the auto tracking we're going to set the active points per frame to uh, 200 400 and the minimum distance to 1 now the minimum distance is the minimum distance between the tracking points itself um, because I want to get a huge huge detailed uh, point cloud really I'm going to set it to such a high uh, value now I track them all take, takes a little bit of time and as you can see all the yellow dots are now tracking points now because this was a helicopter shot um, we don't have the lens information which we have to uh, calculate now because I know uh, what the camera was which was, which was shot with uh, and I know the lens um, we can already fill in the film back width and height and uh, calculate the focal length the camera it was shot with was the Arri Alexa and the uh, lens that was used was a 30 to 300 millimeter lens. Now the film back width and the film back height I found on the Arri Alexa website. Uh, normally they are displayed in millimeters but for some weird reason 3D Equalizer uses it in centimeters. And you set the focal length to adjust so they pop up in your parameters adjustments now the range because I knew it was a 30 to 300 millimeter lens uh, we set it to that and the method I mostly use is adaptive you can brute force it and it will try to calculate 20 30 50 uh, or 100 points but it takes a really really long time uh, what the adaptive method does is it picks a couple of points and it goes towards the lowest value over and over again. It's really, really, really much faster. Um, so there was a focal length of almost 200 millimeters. We're going to calculate it. Takes a little bit of time because we have a couple of hundred tracking points. Now, as you can see, that's not really the path the camera would have been flying shooting this. Um, it's trying to fine tune, but something is really, really wrong. just click uh, use results because it's not going anywhere as you can see it's all over the place we have an average deviation of 29.4 which is pretty pretty bad um,
we can delete the topmost points because we know they are pretty bad we calculate again which does seem to work at first a little bit better but then after it has everything you can see the uh, camera path is really 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 weird um, because this, these results aren't really because of the uh, tracking points we know it must have been probably the lens parameters uh, so we're going to check them again we can calculate them again and this is a bit of uh, yeah, trial and error we tried it with a couple of different settings um, and we eventually came instead of 200 on almost 50 um, if we calc from scratch again now you can clearly see that this is much 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 more likely to be correct uh, if you look closely and I think we're going to in a minute you can see the two cranes and the ship in the foreground the camera path because we can see it from the shot the camera is of the helicopter is flying pretty straight um, so this is much much better Right, now the key is we still have an average deviation of uh, 4.66, which is still too high. Normally on 4K footage you want to get it below 4, 2K footage is below 2, and HD footage is below 1. But um, with multiple shots on 4K I got the average deviation below 1, uh, so I would suggest you guys do it too. Try to get it below 1 even on 4k footage then at least you know the tracking it sticks it's good and uh, now we deleted a couple of points again from the top uh, to try to get the average deviation uh, lower first it was 4.66 now it's 2.42 which is better still not really really good so we're going to delete uh, again a couple now what I just did uh, in the point browser I scroll through it because I select them but then I uh, look into the point browser to see if I didn't select too many because we still need really a lot of points to calculate it correctly um, if you delete too many your average deviation will go up again and you can't get the points back so you need to re uh, auto track and you don't want it so make sure you don't delete too much again use results trying to get the deviation below 1 1.2 is where we're currently at I think we're going to delete one more time the top a little too many 200 points 180 is better tracking again uh, <coughs> and see if we come up with a better result looks pretty good one point one as I said everything on 4k footage below 4 is pretty okay not really good but it's okay uh, one point one on 4k footage it's 
good enough. If you can see it slide, try to retrack, try to uh, have some extra. Um, this is also because we don't really know exactly what kind of camera was used, what all the other parameters do, and what uh, what the other parameters were. Um, you will have a pretty tough time getting it really, really, really low. What we're going to do here is set the um, distance constraint. Now, it, it's really convenient. We have two containers exactly the same on top of each other. So, we can't really easily track the uh, top and the uh, lower part of the container. But the logos are in the same place. So if we track the logos on the same uh, point, that's exactly one container high. Now, you can search online for uh, the height of containers. <coughs> so we can set the distance constraint of exactly one container high. And there we go. External dimensions are 2.591. Now just like last time we can set it into the camera or into the uh, point group on the distance constraint enable distance constraint we know it's point one and two because those are the last we uh, edit we define them and the distance is in centimeters so it was two meters and uh, 95, 59, sorry, centimeters. Now, first time we're going to calc calculate with the lens parameters and the distance constraint. Now, if everything is correct, the whole scene should now be uh, in the correct size in the correct scale we can see there are a couple of points that are being reared we just delete them calculate again and sometimes it's just a couple of points that are um, fucking up your track really if I'm allowed to say it like that as you can see it's almost one there are two three four points something like that still in the way by the way if you do that uh, please please look it up if you don't uh, accidentally delete your distance constraint I had it a couple of times that those track were pretty bad and it doesn't really care if you have a distance constraint on top of it yet, uh, or, or you don't. If you accidentally delete your distance constraint, you can uh, edit it again, but waste of time. Now, we're going over to the enhanced tracking, I think. you can enable image control and the chroma key now the chroma key I, I really really love it uh, is one of the things I used the most when I had uh, trouble tracking a, 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 a shot what it does is it selects one color um, as you can see over there it selects yellow right now uh, you can increase the contrast or the range, pick more colors or uh, pick less. And what this does is, if you have one color, that is pretty difficult to um, to track. And now the the yellow in this container is pretty obvious, and you can really uh, easily track it. But if you have a, a, a for example a, a blue. Um, sticker on the side of a blue gray container you can pick the blue sticker and it will subtract it from the blue gray container 
So even if you don't have that much difference between the object you're trying to track and the object that is your background, uh, it will really, really help to just pick that one uh, color out of it and track it. I even tracked uh, uh, skies or clouds with this while it was pretty much overcast. So it's it's really, really handy. Now the curves are just the same in, uh, uh, as in After Effects. Didn't really use them that much because didn't really see why I needed them. Same with the color controls, never really used them. Never got really better track with uh, doing something with the colors really. And the same counts for the blur sharpen that I'm going to show you in uh, a couple of seconds. If you sharpen it you will have some artifacts and blurring. I have no idea why you want to do it. Don't forget to enable or disable image controls, all of them. Right, F5 brings you to the 3D tracking points. Now, uh, 3D points are uh, really the tracking points but if the they move out of frame they will still be there it's just now we're moving to the 3d uh, world space uh, f6 is the shortcut again uh, extend the uh, far clipping plane and the grid size all these points make up the point cloud as you can see you have the side of the ship and the two cranes in front and a whole point cloud in the back looks really really awesome uh, in tutorial 4 I think we're going to use this track as well oh video 3 and, uh, three and 4 we're going to use this uh, shot as well and I'll show you guys who you can how you can get it to Nuke and uh, Maya We have two workflows to uh, getting that into there. Just checking if everything sticks. It does stick pretty good, I think. No weird artifacts or points that are going totally crazy. Um, looking pretty good. 